Well, now that we've been growing Christmas trees for five years, I now realize there's one species of tree we should have been planting since the very beginning. Check this out. So we're out here doing a little bit of spring cleanup this weekend and we came across this tree right here which is a scotch pine that we planted in the field and growing up right next to it is a Virginia pine that apparently you know seed was dropped by an animal or something or already in the soil who knows but anyway that tree has sprouted here naturally and has grown at a rate in which it, it, it has outpaced the scotch pine that we uh, that we planted there intentionally and if you look all around our fields the evergreens that you see along our tree lines and in the woods 90 percent of them are virginia pines they're everywhere they grow like weeds around here and i have heard and and i had heard when i started this plenty of people say virginia pines can be christmas trees in my head it was not a christmas tree I was always used to either a spruce or a fir, and I was just like, I'm not going to grow Virginia pines. There's plenty of other trees that'll make better Christmas trees. And then I went and got a bunch of scotch pines, which aren't any better. I now know the scotch pines are also kind of a pain in the neck. They're susceptible to a number of different pests and diseases, and they don't want to grow straight. And there's all those kind of issues where Virginia pines, native to the area here, grow everywhere and grow just fine with minimal issues. Now, getting them to grow with a perfect shape will be something that I'll have to try to figure out. But I know there are plenty of farms, especially further south, where they get lots of heat, lots of dry weather in the summertime, and Virginia pines can power through that weather, which we also get plenty of that here. All right, so I showed you guys the other day our planting bed or our transplant bed. We got some Virginia pine seedlings from the forestry department. They were tiny. They're like this big. So we're not gonna put any of those in the field just yet, but I do have plenty of seedlings that I can find along my tree edges here that we can transplant in the field and we can start to see how they'll do as Christmas trees over the next year or two. All right, so here's a little hillside that I started to clear about, I don't know, a year and a half ago. And in the last year and a half, there are numerous Virginia pine trees through here that have sprouted up. Some are you know, over two feet tall. So we're gonna dig some of these up, the ones that look better, that look straighter from the get-go. We're gonna dig some of those up and plant them in the field. Doesn't look bad. I'm gonna try to keep some of this soil with it. It'll make my bucket heavier, but I think it'll work out. Well, that didn't take long at all. Got a handful of trees in the bucket and I'm gonna go get them in the field. You can probably see sun is going down. So I'm trying to get this done tonight and there's lots more of these trees around. I think I'm gonna walk around, maybe some more tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, I don't know. But I'm gonna go find some more and get them in the field. We've got space for them. And if they do well for us, you know, we'll plant a lot more. I've got a couple hundred coming up in the transplant bed. So next year or the year after, we'll see when we get to those. Those will get in the ground. But uh, yeah, like I said in the beginning, this is something that we should have considered a little bit more closely in the very beginning because native tree selection is probably pretty important you're trying to force stuff to grow that doesn't typically grow in this environment like firs which is what we tried to do our first couple years and we had really really poor success with those so we've got to refocus now and focus our energy on things that will grow in this area and we know virginia pines will because they're everywhere so if we can grow these in half decent looking Christmas trees, then, uh, then we'll be all right. So let me get these in the ground and we'll talk a little bit more about what else is to come here on the Christmas tree farm.
I've been talking about doing this for a couple years now and every year kind of key transplanting time passes us before we really get a chance to do it and just about did it again this year because this week it was uh, in the 70s and 80s again the next week's gonna cool off and we're gonna get normal springtime here but uh, I think I could probably find another probably 20 or 30 of those easily and maybe more but that's not a lot of work that took me 20 minutes total digging up planting and talking to you guys and I could get a lot more trees uh, if I just spent an hour an hour and a half doing it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then you know in coming years I can update you guys on that because you know how slow of a process this is but uh, I'm in the area of the field here where we had a bunch of canaan firs. Most of them died. There's a handful of survivors. And I'm going to come up in these rows and fill it in with pine trees as I get them either from here, from the Virginia pines from the property, or white pines that I have up front in the transplant bed. All right, so I told you I'd talk to you a little bit about what's gonna be happening on the farm this year. We are making changes again, as we've done, as we've continued to evolve year over year. And this year we're putting more emphasis on the firewood business. If you've seen some of the recent videos, you've seen that I, I built a firewood kiln that's over there in the background. And that's a solar kiln that uh, also has a wood stove in it so we can heat it up pretty good and dry out some firewood. And since we got a sawmill last year, we can also use it to dry out lumber. Lumber mostly for our own projects, though I could explore selling some lumber in the future. As far as our flower seasons go, and if you're not familiar, we have for several years now done some events where people can come and pick their own flowers. We've done sunflowers, zinnias, cosmos, and a few other types of flowers and last year we tried doing two events we're gonna go back to doing just one event this year and I think um, hopefully we can get it done right this year last year we struggled a little bit partially because of the weather partially because our soils are just so yucky but I'm gonna update you guys on the flower stuff here in another week or two because pretty soon it's gonna be time to and I'm pointing over there because our big sunflower field is on that half of the field over there there's two and a half acres there that haven't yet been planted in Christmas trees and that's what we did in sunflowers last year we did a big cover crop on that this year this winter and pretty soon we'll need to start thinking about how to prep that for spring and if we want to do a spring cover crop or if we just want to let it hang out I'm still thinking about that if you got any feedback let me know but uh, yeah that is what's going on with that and then we are also finishing up the inside of our shop we started with the insulation on that the other day we're gonna work on it some more this weekend and um, hopefully we can get that all built out and install an HVAC system in there so it'll be comfortable year-round no matter what we decide to do with that building in the future though we know we use it for Christmas time as our kind of checkout area our retail shop but uh, we also run wreath classes out of there and we're considering doing some different things uh, either in spring and summer as well with that building so stay tuned for that but that wraps it up for me on this video today guys thanks for following along I'll see you on the next video bye bye